What's up, everybody? Welcome into another JHow Tech Tip where we're going to talk about how to get the best audio out of OBS using the filters to make sure that your microphone sounds as good as it can. There's some good news and some bad news. The good news is we're actually going to cover a lot of the pitfalls on how to take care of a lot of the issues. The bad news is pretty much everybody watching this video likely has a different microphone. So there's not going to be one setting that's going to be the end all be all, but we'll cover all the stuff you need to know to get the best out of your microphone right now. So a couple of things very quickly before we get started, you should do this before we get into the filters because this will make your life a lot easier. You want to go into your windows settings. You need to go to your sound control panel or your open your sound settings, go to sound control panel, Find your microphone. Please ignore the fact that I have a billion different things. Make sure you find whatever microphone you're using. I'm using a second computer right now to record this, so mine's gonna be a line in. But make sure that you set your microphone up to 100% right here. Go into your microphone settings, set it to 100%. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. You use this as your baseline so that all of the other adjustments are made in OBS. So you never have to come back here again. There are those weird times where Windows will automatically set something lower, but always keep it at 100. Also, the other thing, make sure you go to your microphone, click on your cog wheel, go to advanced audio properties and make sure it's also set to zero dBs. You don't want to have any adjustments here. And this way, everything is baseline and all of your adjustments are in OBS. Now, while we're on this screen, if you do want to try and listen into what you're doing, the best thing to do is to monitor and output. Basically, that's going to allow you to listen. That's the monitoring part to what you're using and output it to headphones. So it allows you to listen to yourself. Now, I will say this isn't a foolproof way because there is a slight audio delay and you have to use headphones if you're going to do this. The better your headphones, the easier this is. That way you can hear for any static or anything like that. So you'd want to put this onto monitor and output when you're done, just turn it back to monitor off. And if you're having trouble in general, just keep it off and then go straight into the settings, which is what we're going to do now. All right. So first things first, you're going to click on your cog wheel and go to filters. Now there's going to be multiple filters that will handle things like taking care of low level noises that kind of bleed through at times to making sure that your microphone isn't always on. We'll also take care of the compressor area as well as some of the high end stuff to make sure that you're taking care of all wavelengths essentially to make sure that you have the cleanest audio you can. You're going to start with the noise suppression filter. This is going to help take care of some of those low level noises. This won't eliminate the fact that when you are talking, those key clicks will come through. What this does is that it helps keep those levels of low level things suppressed as in it helps keep them off of your microphone. If you are talking, you can't really get rid of background noise. It's just always going to be there. But the noise suppression can help keep out some of that when you're not talking or during some of those other issues. You don't hear the key clicks and things like that. And the easiest way to do that is to just look at your microphone and see whether when you stop talking, that background noise is coming through. The easiest way to do that is to just kind of set your suppression level. You don't want to set it too high. If you set it too high, you're going to suppress your own voice potentially, but you want to make sure and just kind of adjust this, see what it is. As I said at the beginning of the video, this will be different for some of you, but a suppression just does exactly what it does. It suppresses low decibel sounds to make sure they don't bleed through on your microphone. And that's pretty much it. I think normally around 30 to negative 40 is going to be a healthy balance. You just have to kind of play around with this and see what works on your end. This is a pretty easy one. All right, next up, there's two ways to handle the next issue on when does my microphone come through? How can I get rid of those random key clicks that are coming through? You can do that by setting up a noise gate. This is one way to handle it. We'll cover the expander here in just a second. So this is the way to say, I don't want my microphone activated until a certain threshold of sound is reached. So if I walk across the room and I snap my fingers, that's normally a low decibel sound. Hopefully some of you don't snap that loud, but it's going to be a low decibel sound as opposed to my, my, my mouth right in front of my microphone. And that is where the noise gate comes through is we need this to be able to open when it reaches a threshold and how quickly, which is your attack time. Normally for me, this can be adjusted in a lot of ways. I want it to attack fast so that as soon as I start talking, it's coming through. So that five milliseconds, it's there. But this is the open and close threshold. So I need this to be able to open when I reach a certain decibel. 
This also helps take care of, again, those key clicks. If the key clicks is about negative 50 decibels because it's much quieter than my voice, then it's not going to reach the open threshold and therefore open my microphone for sound. So this does allow me to play and adjust. If I go and I talk like this and then I lean back from my microphone, there's gonna be a difference in the level of sound and the decibel level. So if I back away from my microphone from time to time or I have a microphone that is really dependent on how close I am and I tend to lean away, I might be clipping my own audio. So you always have to be careful on what microphone you're using and where how much you adjust this. So utilizing your key clicks on your keyboard can really help you adjust this. You can just hit your keyboard while you're adjusting these sliders. This would be the easiest way to do it is to just kind of adjust things, use your surroundings to make those adjustments and see when it opens and when it closes and kind of get an idea for that. I'd say that a lot of the default areas are there and you can utilize those to your advantage. It just depends on your microphone, but making sure to use those techniques to get that to where it balances for your microphone is actually pretty easy just by looking at this and keeping this window here so that you can keep an eye on this. Your hold time is basically how long it holds open if you know that you might have a lot of pauses and when you talk to where you're afraid of it cutting on and cutting off, you can raise this a little bit and the release time means it's gonna take a small amount of time to release and go towards that close. Now, the one thing to note about this, as opposed to an expander, is that this is a cut on and cut off. This is like when you open the gate and close the gate. And it doesn't necessarily have the same type of smooth transition that an expander would. This is basically an on and off switch with a little bit of variation based on what your changes are here. This is a very good option. You use this with the noise suppression and all of a sudden those low level sounds aren't coming through when your microphone is off and it's keeping a lot of those things at bay and then it turns off when you're not talking. This is normally the most common one that a lot of people use, but we're gonna talk about another option that you can utilize as well. So if we're going in the expander role, we don't need a noise gate. We're gonna leave the noise gate off. And honestly, you could in some ways turn off the noise suppression, but you can also use it in conjunction with your expander. So we'll get the expander in, and this kind of has a lot of the different things. The ratio, you can have this around three to one. You can go play between that, the three to four to one. I think three is pretty common for a lot of people. And the threshold is here. So this works in a lot of the same ways that your threshold of when it opens, right? So we saw on the previous one with the noise gate, it was right around that 30 to 40 on where that threshold is. The attack time, again, whether you want it fast or slow, and then the release time. You can raise the release time, and I think this is probably a, one that you want to adjust to raise up to around three to 400. You can raise this up somewhere to where it, wherever it is, and this is going to allow you to have that smoother transition to where it will open up quickly, and it will start to fade away a little bit more. And you can do a lot of that with the noise gate, but at the same time, the expander is kind of like a two-in-one type situation to where you might not need the noise suppression, but they do sometimes work for certain microphones in conjunction. So you can utilize this, use the expander to basically achieve the exact same results as your noise gate. It's just a little bit smoother, so it fades in and fades out, and you have different things going on. So it's not just that turn off, turn off, turn off, turn on situation that you would have with a noise gate. There are some adjustments in the noise gate that can basically handle a lot of these. The expander just might be more of that rolled up two in one option as opposed to the noise gate with that more on and off style feeling. All right, next up is kind of the big one. It is your compressor. Your compressor is trying to make sure that there's not a lot of variations between your highs, your lows, all that stuff in, in terms of your peak volume versus your low volume. And there's a lot of different things to adjust with this. Your ratio on this, a lot of the default settings are pretty good. The compressor can handle a lot of situations. Your threshold, again, I hate to say this, but it will kind of vary on what you're trying to do. For me on the other computer, I can't show you those settings, but this is also where I adjust my gain. I have an external mixer, so I have some things going on there, but this is also the area where this is where I want to adjust my gain. If you're actually watching the microphone volume down here, you can see that when I adjust my gain, 
it's going to adjust how high this goes. If I lower the gain volume, it's going to reduce the volume. If I keep it where it's at, this is where I'm at. Now, this is the important part. You want to be in this yellow zone. You want to be in the sweet zone. So what I want to do here is that I, on my computer, I want to be able to raise it to where I'm normally speaking in this area. For some of you, you're wondering what happens when I start yelling and get loud. Don't worry, we're getting to that filter next but I wanna be able to talk in this area for quite some time. So a lot of what I wanna do is gonna be directly in this area and adjust accordingly. So a lot of the things that you're gonna do are gonna be in the compressor. You can leave a lot of these, the threshold, the, the ratio, a lot of these things you can leave, the attack release you can leave, the output gain is the one. Now, if you are having some issues, your ratio you can adjust to be higher or lower depending on where your settings are. And then your threshold, if your audio is clipping, this is the number one area where you wanna check to make sure that you're not clipping. How do you know that you're not clipping? Well, do the smart thing. Before you go live, start a local recording, record at different settings. And I, what I like to do in that situation is I like to say out loud what the settings are and just read off the settings so that I know when I go back and watch that recording, I can see the difference. So I can do one recording where I say ratio 10 to one, threshold negative 22, output gain here, and then a few seconds later, adjust the settings again and do different things. So I know which one sounds the best when I go back and listen to those recordings. That extra five to 10 minutes that you're putting in to get that local recording and get that going there will save you a ton of headaches going forward. Nobody wants to normally spend those extra few minutes, but this is the number one way to make sure that you set up your audio once and one time only, and you don't have any headaches going forward. So adjust these, try and get that sweet spot with that yellow area. It can kind of dip into the red zone just a little bit, and that's normally where you're gonna find that sweet, sweet spot to where you wanna make sure that you have a more normalized audio at the right decibel level, and now all of a sudden things start to sound a lot better. All right, our last one that we're gonna look at is a limiter. This is probably one of the easiest ones you can set up because guess what? This basically limits how high you can go. The compressor is trying to normalize things. The limiter is making sure that it doesn't go any higher. So you can see that right now it's at negative six. This bar goes from zero all the way down to negative 60. I can set this in the default to negative six and it's gonna guess what? Peak right at negative six. That way it doesn't go out. So for the headphone users that you are inevitably going to have listening to your stream, if you get loud, if you get hype, if you get scared, if you get anything that is peaking at a higher volume to where you go from talking at a normal level to yelling, screaming, whatever it is, then now all of a sudden you're not just peeking out and blowing out people's eardrums. The limiter does just that. It limits how high it can go. So negative six, negative five is normally gonna be just fine. And going back to your compressor is all about making sure that your gain, whether it's through an external mixer or your Windows settings, you can make sure and adjust your gain here to make sure that you're hitting that sweet spot. And no matter what, your limiter will make sure that you do not go any bit higher and bust out the eardrums of those people that might be listening or startle those that might be on speakers as well. And this is the easiest one. Another key important factor is to make sure that to understand the filters go in a chain. So they actually go from top to bottom. So if I had my limiter first, it might not be the most efficient way, but make sure that you get your noise suppression on. So this is a chain. This is the first thing that's applied, the second thing that's applied, the third thing that's applied, and then ultimately the fourth. And you can adjust these things accordingly. The noise suppression you don't always need when you're running an expander, but for some of you, the noise suppression in the expander can be good. If you don't really like the expander options or you're having trouble setting those up, just go and put the noise suppression and the noise gate on and you're gonna be just fine. The compressor is probably the most difficult to set up because it is so individualized, but you can adjust a lot of those things directly to your level so that you can understand, I need to do this, I need to do that, and it makes things a lot easier to troubleshoot in the future. If you did a lot of the, the housekeeping items in the future to make sure that your microphone volume is at 100% in Windows, then these settings, you set them up once and you are done. Until you get a new, better, fancier microphone, you will be done. And that's the most important part about understanding. Setting up audio is normally one of the most important features on your videos that you record on your stream that so many people look to have is to have that perfect audio sound. And this is pretty much going to be how you do it. You invest in your audio and it's going to be the number one thing that will carry on forever until you get a new microphone. And it's going to be one of the most important investments you make when it comes to time. 
So hopefully this video helped you to get everything set up so that you no longer have to worry about your audio issues going forward. So if you liked the video, feel free to hit that like button below or leave a comment below letting me know if this helped you. And if it didn't help you, well, feel free to hit that down button or let me know in comments what you might like to see different going forward. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button for future tech updates but also to help the continued growth of the channel. That would be very much appreciated. Thank you all so much for watching. Till next time.